Hello, welcome to board games with Niramas. I'm Joseph, and I'm here today with Raku and also with Rob. So say hi to Rob from Rob's Gaming Table. We are going to do a top five adventures games list today. It's going to be interesting to see. I know that Rob, you really like uh, these kind of adventure style games, right? Yes, I do love adventure games. I want to say congratulations on hitting 5K, Joseph. Uh, I've been watching your channel for a while. Glad we can finally connect here and do this. Uh, but yes, I do love adventure games. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's so fun to do these kind of collab videos as well. I I I never done these kind of setups uh, before either. It's it's like a new thing for me. <laughs> it's new for me too. So hopefully this this turns out okay. I apologize, internet, if this doesn't doesn't turn out great. Uh, I'll blame Joseph though. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm the editing guy, so they should blame. <laughs> yeah, me. yeah. Leave your comments down below and uh, rip on Joseph if it's uh, not up to par. <laughs> so so like the first thing that that. Um, came to mind when we I was going to do this list is like what is an adventure game because that could be I mean what are we what are, what are we going by we could go by like the board game geek definition or, or how it feels or how, how did you do this well I first couldn't figure it out I started looking at my shelves in my collection I went through my board game geek list and was like what's an adventure game I started making a list it wasn't that long because I had very specific criteria for adventure so then I went to board game geek I realized adventure was a category so I sorted by that category. I later went through page after page and I marked off everything that I've played, got a list, and then I kind of scratched out ones that I feel weren't adventure games. So my definition is like, I need to feel like I'm going on an adventure. There are some games I saw on the list like Gloomhaven or Champions of Midgard, which have adventure elements in them. But to me, those games like Champions of Midgard feel like straight worker placement. Yes, you get on you get on a boat and and you know, and you can travel and fight a monster is like one small portion of the game really but it's like that doesn't make me feel like it's a huge adventure game and gloomhaven yes you are adventuring all around the city of gloomhaven and beyond but it's like really it's a dungeon crawler or a bunch of scenarios back to back to back right yeah um, yeah that's so true I, and it's I, like raiders of the north sea for me that's just like a euro game basically or like a resource yes, management but you are game. adventuring yeah. you are yeah. getting in a boat <laughs> and adventuring to raid but it's like yeah it doesn't feel like you know you're starting off at nothing and adventuring out into the world and you know building up to a big boss or a big finale or a climax or something like that they, they kind of have those in those games a little bit but it's not what i would consider an adventure game all right so with that out of the way i think we are ready to get started right so um i mean you're the guest so you should be starting with your number five awesome all right so my number five is the hexplorit series by mariucci j designs uh i'm considering both volumes that are out so far i think he has like six volumes planned in the series eventually uh, i played through it on the channel recently um it is a true adventure game it's fantasy themed there is valley of the dead king and the forest of adramon they're two separate games and there's another one that's coming out soon called the sands of shirax i believe uh and these are hex-based map games with quests you go on, bosses you fight, enemies you go after, you level up, you uh, start off with very low stats, you work your way up, you improve yourself. And the hook in the game is you're using dry erase markers on dry erase character boards to write in your stats. And there's a battle, there's a battle dry erase board, you're drawing out the battle math and any abilities you have or like if you get uh, confined or you're bleeding, you write that down, you make notes, you have a little satchel on your player board where you write in the items you have and how many each you have. It's just a weird concept. I thought it was kind of silly when I first heard about a game with dry erase boards and markers, but if you see it on the table, it looks really cool and it's more fun than it came across. And I really love that game. It's long, but I play it myself and with my wife and we go on adventures for many hours, uncovering crazy encounters and eventually working your way to the final boss threat. And if you take too long in the game, the boss will come and get you, whether you're ready or not. So it's like, yeah, it's very, very high pressure kind of game. It's very neat. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't five, played these, this one. I, I, I watched one of, I watched like a few minutes of one of your streams the other day because I came in late and I was thinking like, oh, I have to watch this from the beginning at some point because it looked yeah. interesting. <laughs> it looked like a lot going on. It is a lot going on. It takes a while. It's a small rule book, but it's like 80 pages of like a half size rule book. There's quite a bit going on and some of it's not all in the rule book. It's on like placards that are included in the game. So like you just go to a shop in the game and you have this like big placard dual sided that lists all the different items you can buy. And then each game there are different items that do different things. And there might be multiple places you can go shop at, for example. It's like pretty deep. 
um, and just lots going on, lots, lots in that game. I love it. Yeah, well, I will have to watch. Uh, I will have to watch uh, your streams afterwards here, and you know, as <laughs> and, and as you uh, when we talk about these games and we talk about you know, like if if Rob made a video or if I made a video, the links will be down in the description as well, so you can go check that out. Perfect. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to explain some of these in like a couple sentences. It's better if like you see them played or go read more on on the on the board game geek or the links down below. But I might not be doing it justice. But you got to see it. You got to see it on the table. It's quite the sight. All right, that, that's that's an interesting pick, and uh, I think I'm I, I am suspecting that you might have one or two more that I haven't played, <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. Uh, maybe, but we'll see. <laughs> I think we have one in common. I think at least, but we'll see. All right, so <laughs> so my number five here is uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault, which mm. is a Star Wars dungeon crawl game and i think maybe you don't agree on this one but the campaign game is really strong like the game has both a campaign and a skirmish mode and the skirmish mode is obviously not an adventure game in my opinion but the the campaign game especially i when you play it like against other like you have one overlord player basically that is the bad guy or the empire and so the rebel players don't really know what's going to happen at certain points during each of these scenarios it's like you know, grid, hex grid uh, combat, but it links together and it forms a sort of somewhat story and feeling of an adventure. You're trying to you know, stop the Empire, basically, and you will run into these, like, you're not playing the main characters of Star Wars, which is something I like. You're playing, like, these, uh, I don't know, like, no new characters, basically, that they came up with for the game, but you will run into Chewbacca and you can get some help from Luke and so on. So I really like that for for a campaign game. And I I'm not even sure if it's considered an adventure game, but for me, I get that feeling if I play the rebel player. That is. Yeah, it makes sense. I I know of Descent. I have Descent Second Edition, and I know Star Wars Imperial Assault's like a reskin of that game with the Star Wars license. Uh, and I think that with the campaign in Star Wars compared to what's in Descent, I would consider the Star Wars one more an adventure game. I think so I too. Yeah. To this point, but. I haven't played Descent, yeah. but from what I heard of Descent, and I have friends that played it and so on, that is, I would say that, I, th I think Star Wars has a stronger uh, story to it uh, in yes. the campaign. Yes, it does, yeah. You could tell they spent more money and time actually writing a cohesive story with that game. Descent's more just like kind of like sort of standalone. Yeah. And they both came out with an app though, right? Like you can play that without the dungeon master, right? Yeah, exactly. And, uh... and to be honest, I, I, I haven't played Star Wars that way. Um, but oh, I, okay. I think I should. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of excited <laughs> when they the announced the app, but then at the time when yeah. it came out, that was I think it was like the same exactly the same time as I started playing Gloomhaven solo. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so I was not. It, it never came around, and I, just recently I uh, because I got one of those E Raptor inserts for for Star Wars Imperial Assault, so I like made a video of that, a review, and I, I organized well, everything. I watched that. Yep. Uh, so now I'm really like, okay, I'm gonna. I need to go get back into this game, and I need to tr play against the app uh, on in solo mode. Um, I need. I really need to do that. So that's my my number five here. Um, tell me in the comment section if you agree with me or not. <laughs> so let's head over to your number four then. My number four is Seventh Continent, uh, the Seventh Continent by Serious Pulp. Um... I'm sure you've all heard of this game. Uh, it's a, it was a very big Kickstarter, first and second time it came on Kickstarter. It is a card-driven, uh, it's all cards. You feel like a librarian uh, going through stacks of cards, pulling out cards, building your map. As you discover the island, you're trying to survive. The island's trying to kill you. You're trying to uh, remove a curse. So you're going back to this mysterious island, trying to solve puzzles, discover things, find stuff on the island to survive, like build you know, weapons and that kind of thing to fight off the beasts on the island and eventually remove the curse that inflicted you the last time you are on the island. So you can combine different curses together, but you basically go on a super long adventure and try to get rid of a curse or die trying. But I love the ex exploration in that. I love uncovering the mysteries of the island. And every time I play it, I spend many hours in that world trying to just hang on for dear life. But the way the story kind of unfolds hidden in all these cards, I think is a very surprising... And a mind-blowing thing at first when you just see it's only cards and and you think not much of this story but this story just comes out in this game and i love it so i feel like you're going on an adventure in that game because you're starting out literally just landing on an island and you have no idea what's around you and where to start and what to do and you got to adventure all the way to the end 
Yeah, I agree. That's, and my, it, that's my number four. It has a really good, uh, like, a save system as well. So, like, it's, it's yeah. pretty, pretty much impossible. If you can't have it, you know, you, if you have, like, a table that you don't need for a while, you could yeah. play it in, all, in, in one big, you know, having it out yeah. there. But uh, I, I also think even you should be saving in the game because, like, when you... You're really, supposed to, yes. Yeah. When you reload, yeah, things might have changed yeah. a little bit. Yep, and there's a uh, with the food in it and stuff. You'll you'll use food and it'll go to like a discard pile. Some stuff gets burned out of the game, out of that session, from when you either beat the game or you die. Some of it's like gone from the decks completely, but some of it's discarded. And the only way to get that discarded stuff back is by actually, basically making camp, saving the game, putting it away. And it's a very quick system. But I like to leave it out. And then there's kind of like a fake reset you can do where you hit kind of like the edge of the map of the edge of your table. And you can just kind of like, there's like a half save thing you could do. And I would leave it on my table and just cover it with my table topper. Oh, nice. Because I didn't want to have to clean everything up. But I still would do the fake save every now and then. Uh, the chat would tell me, Rob, you're running out of food in these food decks. You need to like save and rest up or else you just won't find any of that stuff anymore. Uh, so it's really neat. Yeah, but it is connected to the gameplay, which is really cool. It, it, and, and yeah, I, th I think I did something similar when I did my playthrough series as well, because <laughs> I think you have to do it at some point, but uh, yeah, you do have to. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's that's a cool one, a uh, really cool one. Now, my number four has already been mentioned, but not in a positive way. So, my number four <laughs> is Gloomhaven, which I do consider to be an adventure game, and mostly, I th I think that could vary. I think if you play it multiplayer, and you meet up, like I don't know how often people play, but let's say you meet up once a week or whatever, back in the old days when people met up. Then I think it was more of a feeling of, uh, okay, we meet up and this is just one section. We're just doing a tactical combat, basically. And then next time, oh, we're doing another one. And there's no real adventure feeling. But I think Correct, when, you, yeah. when you play it solo, like I did, and I played it, it was kind of crazy. I think, it was, I think it was around Christmas time, 2018, I think, or 2017. I'm confused now when it came out. But, <laughs> but... I think 2017, actually, the first wave came out, but oh, most yeah. people... I got, I got the second like wave, late, yeah. Yeah, so late 2017, yeah. I think, is when it arrived, or early 2018, maybe. Yeah, uh, and I, I mean, I played for, like, I don't know, a month and just had it on my table, and I, I just, you know, kept playing and playing, and, like, when I was out for work or doing other stuff, I, I, I you know, I, had this, I went around thinking about Gloomhaven, and, like, oh, when I get <laughs> home, I'm going to do this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upgrade this guy, and I'm going to do that. And that's, that was a really cool feeling. I, I haven't really gotten that feeling from a board game uh, at all, I think. I mean, I got that from, you know, playing like Diablo or World of Warcraft or, or PC yeah. games. Like w yeah. when, when I'm driving home from work, I'm, I'm like excited. I want to get home and, and keep playing. And I got yeah. that from Gloomhaven. And for me, that was a big adventure feeling for me because I, I, I played it so intensively. Uh, so that's... Uh... But I, I see what you're saying as well there, that it's, it's in the story is... It's not that strong in Gloomhaven. There, it's a story it, there. It, but... it, it, it is there if you're playing it, as you say. If I, was, if I played Gloomhaven, like you said, within a month or two, back to back, kind of like how we play our legacy games, the story is there and it's in front of you. But yeah. the problem and what happened to us, we took two months break between and, and we moved in the middle of our, of, our, of our session. So I had to put it all away. We moved. We got the new house. I had to get our friends back playing, refresh ourselves on the rules. And we just didn't remember what was going on in the story. We had no idea. So it, it just didn't feel like an over-connecting adventure. It just felt like you said was just separate games. The, the adventure in there we had and I loved is the adventure of uncovering new classes and the adventure of going from your like level zero class, taking them all the way up to level nine. That feels amazing. But to me, just the story, it, it has a map and has stickers and everything, but it doesn't like, I just feel it didn't connect well enough to make it. It made it would make my list just based on its gameplay. It's an amazing game, but for this, I wanted to really focus on games that felt like I was adventuring more in like a single session, sort of. Yeah. Or a couple I sessions. What you're saying. Yeah. Gloomhaven's adventure is like it's multiple adventures within it, but it's going to take you many play sessions just to get one character going from zero to retired, right? So yeah. it's like yeah, I, it I don't understand. Time. Like, if, let's say a four-player group. I don't. How many of those can there be in the world that have actually played through the whole thing together? I don't yeah, understand how, it, how that's we, possible. We did it with two. Mel and I played almost. But every you live together, scenario. right? So. 
Yes, but we and we had our friend Justin join us, but he only joined us probably for like thirty percent of, oh, yeah. of the story, maybe fifty at most. You can jump in and out over okay. all the time. Yeah. yeah, you can jump in and out, but we never. We tried it one time. We had one scenario. We played four players, but we could never get everyone organized, and we wanted to keep playing. So yeah. otherwise, it would take us ten years to finish it if we didn't. <laughs> We didn't and, just and also, play without people. Also, I have to ask you because you, I haven't watched it yet because I don't want to spoil it for myself, but you have been playing, you and Mel have been playing through the uh, Jaws of the Lion, right? Yeah, we completed that actually. Yeah. We played almost every single scenario in it except for two that we got locked out of or something oh, like that. Okay. So, yeah, so, we, we, play, we played the crap out of that game. It was awesome. You, you, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I wanted to ask you. Was it, was it as good as the big one? I wish it came out before the big one. Because it is what I will recommend to anyone who says, Rob, you love Gloomhaven, what should I buy? I'll tell them every time, Jaws of the Lion. Don't, put, don't start with Frosthaven. Don't start with Gloomhaven. Go buy Jaws of the Lion. It's less money. It teaches the game way better. has a way better rule book. It takes out some of the fiddly rules. And it gives you just enough Gloomhaven that feels more like a... It feels more on the level of Pandemic Legacy content-wise. Like you'll get a ton of playthroughs out of it. But it has like a nice conclusion. It has a nice set amount of scenarios. But Gloomhaven, like you said, how many people actually finish it with four players? I believe four players could actually finish Jaws of the Lion because you'll only play around 15 to 20 scenarios, and that's it. That's all that's in the box. I really, think it's right? coming so, to Sweden fairly soon. I think it was September or something. I think but, September, yeah. yeah. September, it's going like rest of the world, I think, is what yeah. I heard too. So, I really look yeah, forward to it. And, you need to play it. And yeah, I'm, I'm going like to play it solo, and I'm going to do stream, streams or, or record it as well, and, and I'll do... For me, it's also very good because it will be like a, a bit of a reminder, right? Before Frosthaven arrives next year. Exactly. For I, us, I use it as a reminder. We're going to play Forgotten Circle still. We haven't gone oh, into that. Okay. So yeah. I use that to replay, like to re retrain us into Gloomhaven. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so Gloomhaven got a little bit of a, a you know, be, be, got some focus here anyway. But um, <laughs> now we're on to number three, right? Uh, yes. So my number three is Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon by Awaken Realms. Uh, Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon, you could tell is a, I don't know, it obviously was heavily inspired by the Seventh Continent as the same idea of the locations on the map are kind of coming off of a deck as you explore, the map will grow, it's all card based. Uh, you pick some characters, your characters level up, you have a lot of um, little resources you got to manage, you'll, you'll build up your combat deck, you'll go through a giant exploration journal going through like a choose your own adventure with a deep Arthurian legend kind of twist. It's a very dark like Legends of Arthur kind of story to it. Uh, I like the twist they did on it. It's very it's a it's it's an adventure game but it has like a very heavy survival aspect to it. You really have to play careful. You really have to judge uh, scenarios. You can't just run around punching every every monster in the face sometimes you have to turn around and run and i like when i realize that and how the game plays but it is a very long very deep very well written story and it, it makes you want to play through it again because there's so many branching paths but it is a it's an adventure it's like seventh continent on steroids in my opinion <laughs> but uh that's that's tainted grail the fall of avalon by awaken realms yeah that's a good three. that's a good way to describe it and uh, if you want to, this is one of those games where I'm going to say, like, I don't even know if I recommend the viewers to watch me, my playthrough no, or your playthrough, because yeah, if you're going to play it. the game, you're going to, like, spoil it for yourself. Yeah, um, that's a, and that's not what I want to say, too, about John's the Lion. Do not watch our playthrough. Uh, Joseph, uh, play through it clean. Do, yeah. not, do not watch anything, but the same with Tainted Grail. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Watch, like, you can watch, like, episode one or a tutorial oh, yeah, scenario, uh, but, but that, don't go beyond that. Like, don't go beyond that, unless... Unless you never plan to play it. Yeah, exactly. Like I did, I'm doing, well, I am doing, it's been a while since I did my last episode, but I'm, I am like doing a live stream series with the solo in Tainted Grail. And yeah, you guys, saw, you guys, posted, yeah. and you guys did two players. So there's a bit of, uh, you know, you can, you can see like one, one episode of each and you can get an idea of, okay, how does it play solo? How does it play with two yep. players? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I, I must also, the story. Yeah. I, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I must also say that, that, uh, I watched the, through the whole thing that you guys did after I because I, I played through it with two characters on my own at first. Oh, okay. And then I watched your whole thing, which of course was a bit spoilery for me because you had you made some other choices at some points and yeah, that's yep. But that's then what I, I'm saying in the yeah. game, you could play through it twice and probably still not experience everything yeah. in the game. Like no way you could. 
Uh, you have to have every character go go to pick certain options and I was just yeah, so into it so I was just like I have to watch this I want to see how you guys did <laughs> so. <laughs> that's why we did that playthrough I, I I do the same thing after we finish a game I'll go watch someone else's playthrough just to see what happens but that game I didn't because I plan on playing it solo again I want to go through it after like after I give it a few months of forgetting exactly what happened and I want to play through it kind of fresh a little bit so I also look, look forward to the expansions coming uh, sometime later on oh. here uh, yeah, that's going to be wait. so much fun. So Yes. <laughs> okay, so my number three is uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, uh, which is a game I talked quite a bit about on the channel earlier as well. It's been on my co-op list and so on, and solo list as well, I think. It's it's everywhere. I really enjoy this game a lot. And, and then I still haven't... I know I, did, I didn't get a new expansion. It just came out, a new expansion. I haven't played that one yet. But I, I think the system is so nice here. We have... It's like... Mentions of Madness Second Edition did a thing with the whole app integration. So you have the app do taking care of the boring stuff, like how much health does this monster still have? The app takes care of that, which I I like yeah. it so much. And it works so well. And like I like Mansions of Madness Second Edition as well. Um, but speaking of adventure games, then Lord of the Rings: Journeys in Middle Earth is a real adventure game. While yeah. Mansions of Madness is like okay, one scenario this evening. It doesn't connect to the other scenarios. So. Yeah, it's like a Mansion of Madness is like a dungeon crawler, in my opinion, versus Lord of the Rings, which is more of an adventure version yeah, of that game. Yeah. And and I really like how they also change because I'm not a big I I don't mind dice and I mean there's dice in Star Wars Imperial Assault and so on, but they're very special dice. Um, yeah. But I'm not a big fan of the dice system in the the Cthulhu games usually. Uh, yeah. it's, it's often just oh did you get a hit or did you not get a hit that, you know, it's like it's, it's from it's... x-wing that that system they, they took that from uh, x-wing yeah. uh from ancient manis it's that exact same system yeah so so yeah i thought that was a little bit uh turning me off from from that but then in in lord of the rings journey in middle earth instead you have this card hand management sort of system which is really fun it's i don't think i've seen exactly that one either in a game before so it's and, and again, like I talked about Gloomhaven, I mean, talking we're talking theme yeah. here mostly today, but my favorite uh, game mechanic in Gloomhaven is the whole, you know, hand management and how to play oh, those Oh, yeah, cards. hard play. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Lord of the Rings. And, and the only weird thing with this game is maybe that if you're a fan of the lore, which which I, I'm not really these days, but I was when I was younger. I read all the books over and over and I love the movies yeah. and everything. Then it's a bit weird sometimes, like, why is Gimli hanging out with, a certain you know character <laughs> it doesn't make sense but yeah, if you can yeah. if you can look beyond that then it's it's uh, an awesome adventure feeling you get when you play the game and yeah. i think you guys I, played I this like it, as yeah. well right yep we played everything except for the new expansion shadow paths it, it we're it's coming we we ordered it it just hasn't arrived yet but we we are getting that one and to play through on the channel and i'm looking forward to the expansion later this year but i do like that game a lot. It did not make my top five. It it was number seven. Okay. Yeah. And it's probably just because we haven't played it since last year. Uh, but it is a very good adventure game. I like it better than Mansions of Madness. I love the whole idea. The the, the one negative that I, I talk about Gloomhaven a lot is when you set up a scenario, and we keep going back to Gloomhaven because it's the big, big number one elephant in the room. But uh, Gloomhaven, when you open up a scenario to set it up from the book, Every, you can see everything. You know what enemies oh, yeah. are coming. You yeah. know where they are on the board. There's no surprise. But the cool part with Mage of the Madness and Lord of the Rings Journey in Middle Earth, the app hides all of that from you. So you, it will tell you what room is next and who what to put there, and it will mess with you the next time you go to play. It will change that up on you. So I like the way there's that all that hidden behind the software that that's like able to surprise you that a campaign book can't do. Yeah, you know, and like yeah, that's that's a really good point because that's yeah. that's really how I like them to implement you know yeah. doing this whole digital implementation that's one of the main things you have the same thing with with uh, uh well it's not the same thing really but it reminds me of with intended grail when you use the, yeah. the app because if you're looking yeah. at the storybook then you it's really hard not to peek a little bit at what will happen depending on what you choose I yeah, found it's, yeah. it's, it's, it does it's sort of you know it's there's so much to look at but if you do the app for tainted grail then you have no idea. Like, okay, I'm I'm gonna kill this cow. I don't know if that's gonna get me food or if the farmer is gonna get angry and start attacking me. I have no idea what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I know that's that's why I like apps and board games. A lot of people say they don't want apps with their board games, yeah. but man, there is. I, I like the same thing with uh, this war of mine. The same oh, idea. Yeah. You got yeah, an yeah. app in it. Same idea. Awaken Realms. Yeah, hiding stuff in an app. I like that a lot. All right, so that's uh, Lord of the Rings. So now we're up to number two, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, number two is for me is Mage Knight the board game by WizKids. Uh, yeah, Mage Knight. Ugh. I only played Mage Knight this year. It's been out since like 2012, I think. I got the Ultimate Edition. Uh, I struggled with the rule book. It, I put the rule book back down. I put the game back on the shelf. A couple weeks later, I pick it off the shelf, read the rule book again, struggle with it, put it back on the shelf. I watch some videos. I struggled, I struggled, I struggled. But finally, if you can get Mage Knight on the table, it gives you that adventure feel like no other, except for my number one. Uh, where you start out from zero and you are this mage knight and you have crappy cards in your deck. It's really a deck builder, but it has the same thing I like, which I mentioned, Seventh Continent, Tainting Grail, and we just talked about with Lord, Lord of the Rings, is that map that you don't know what's next. And it has the random map set up on the board and you don't know what's going to happen and the game will throw these situations at you and you have to try to play your turn as efficiently as possible and you eventually work your way up to this mage that's like walking in a city and punching 10 monsters in the face that originally at the beginning of the game, one of these monsters would kill you in a second. But now you're at the end and you're able to, or not kill you, but wound you a lot. <laughs> but yeah, you eventually build yourself up and you're just taking it down. It's like, it feels very adventuristic that you like learn these spells and you get better cards in your deck and you take on monsters and, and and challenges in the game by the end you feel like very accomplished like you went from nothing to hero in, in a playthrough of mage knight and you're adventuring across this map and yeah it's like that's an adventure game to me and that's that's why a lot of these games on my list they have that similar aspect to them of kind of like progressing across an overworld map dealing with challenges that's kind of like what an adventure game is to me and that's that's Mage Knight the board game. It's a heavy beast, but man, yeah, it's so rewarding if you can if you can get past that rule book. And you, you've done uh, live streams of this as well, right? Uh, yeah, I've done some live playthroughs, like li like seven, eight, nine hour playthroughs, whatever, six hour playthroughs <laughs> of Mage Knight, having fun with the chat, working out cards. Like I was in no rush to play it. Yes, you can play the game by yourself in two or three hours, no problem. But I like getting involved with the chat. There's some very passionate fans of this game that have been playing it for years. And I love discussing like a single turn, spreading out my cards on the table and discussing all the options and everyone's opinions. And like it, yeah, this game has like a, quite a hardcore fan base and I see why it's a very rich and rewarding system. And it's crazy. This old game is still to this day on a lot of top lists and a lot of games can't even, can't even compare to it. I, I don't know. It's just a, just a beast of a game, but a very, very beautiful game. Um, and that, that's yeah. one thing I really impressed with. I mean, you Obviously, you you guys are one of my favorite uh, channels to watch on YouTube. And oh. one, one thing I really like about your channel is that you, and I don't understand how you do it. I, I don't have the stamina, I think. But you, you do these, like, as you say, long streams. And you really take your time to actually, you know, interact with, with the chat and all that. And I think I, I, <laughs> it's like every time I jump in on your streams, I, I feel like I'm welcome in some way because, you know, yeah, it's, you're coming to Rob's gaming table, even though, Joseph, you're in Sweden, you are you come in my chat, you're in my basement, pulling up a chair at Rob's gaming table. That's the way it is, that's what I'm doing, I'm trying to pull more board gamers into the hobby and feel welcome and not be afraid of some of these medium and heavier games, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to spread the love of these awesome games that if you can get through the rule books and yeah, there's some rich rewarding experiences hidden in there and that's, that's what we do here. <laughs> And I have well, thank Mage, you for the kind words. <laughs> I have Mage Knight on my uh, shelf with like uh, an insert, and it's everything sleeved and ready. And I just need to learn it and play it. So yeah, yeah. at some point I will do that, and I will use your videos to help out as well because it, it's what I also what I also recommend there, Joseph. What helped me a lot too is there's some videos that have been posted recently that are nice quality, and they go they teach it better than a lot of the older videos. Uh, if you go to my first playthrough of it, go to the description of that video. I linked a couple other channels that actually go through, like one of them is a teacher and she, uh, Liz Davidson from the Dice Tower and uh, she does a playthrough series and she teaches children and she actually goes through and teaches the game step by step in a series of videos. But there's a couple other ones I linked down there and they helped me a lot. It was like, they treat it, it's like watching, going to class and learning about the game and I think it's very helpful, but that, that helped me a lot. And they, 
that that I was struggling with and then they came out right around the time when I started streaming and they those helped me feel more confident to actually play it on stream. Okay. So, uh, thank you for the for that tip as, yeah, as no well problem. because because yeah, I, it it is it seems a bit scary like I think I watched maybe one or two playthroughs a few years ago and and, and I, I I don't remember it's looking to be that difficult but then yeah. when I started looking at the rule book as yeah. you said that that felt heavy but yeah, at some point I will Get around to that game as well and i have like every time i talk about solo gaming i always get these oh, comments yeah. on my videos people are like Where, where's mage knight why aren't you talking about mage knight <laughs> because yeah, it's a i told you passionate fan base yeah. man there's a passionate oh. fan base and it's it's, it's deserved this game it's, it's a great game uh, all right so my number two is uh actually seven continents so we have that that was that was the one i was expecting us uh to both oh, have on the top okay. five and for me, okay, Seven okay. Continent is, is a bit like, you, if, you know, when I was a kid and, and I, I don't know, it's like some old Nintendo game or something. I, like the first time I felt like, I don't know if it was Zelda or whatever, but you, Zelda, go, on this, yeah, you go on this, yeah, you go on this adventure and you're like, it's so exciting. You don't know what's going to happen. And I get the same feeling when I play Seven Continent. Exactly. Really, the, maybe the storytelling in some ways is not, that's strong but on the other hand it's like you tell your own story because you, you exactly. as you go you build the story i mean i i have a playthrough series that i did a few two years ago that's on the channel i'm not going to spoil it you can go check it out but <laughs> i can tell you this much that i went in the wrong direction for hours and hours and i still had a good time but you know this game can be really tricky and you can get these clues and you're like oh it must mean this and you keep going and then you realize no that was not it at all Oh, oh wow yeah so seven continent is, uh, yeah. is uh, it's it's a beast yeah in, in a good way but uh, and especially yeah. i like this this whole as you said you feel like a li librarian with all these cards but <laughs> but i like how they managed to do that and like and it's a lot of times creative. it's like yeah. yeah so so well made like and a lot of times it's like oh draw this number but then there's like five or ten of the, that number so you don't even know <laughs> Even if you play it, you know, yeah. another time, you don't know for sure what's going to happen because you might get yeah. one of the other cards. Very such, unpredictable. Such a good game. I'm so impressed by this. And I'm excited for the Seventh Citadel that I, probably coming this year. Uh, well, not coming this year, but the Kickstarter will be coming this year, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing more of that on the channel, actually. I did Seventh Con and I played through almost every curse I have. And I had the same experience with the Icy Maze that you just talked about. Uh, if you go watch my playthrough series of that, you could probably skip through the first 10 hours where I wandered around <laughs> not having any idea what to do. And the chat is laughing at me the whole time and they still make jokes about it to this day. But I still had a blast of wandering around in the wrong areas and trying to survive and oh, still had a fun time. It's so good. So the one I the one I filmed this, the one with the, I don't know what it's called, but when you carry around like a, che a treasure chest or a box that you're oh. trying to open. Curse of the Damned, I think. Yeah, I think you start out with some oh. box that you have, and then you're like, "What am I going to yep. do with this one?" Yeah, that, that, that was weird. But and the weird thing also is because they the first one, the first curse that they sort of recommend you to start with the oh. voracious goddess or whatever it's called. Yeah, I don't think that's a good start uh, because no, it is not at all. That's a huge one. Uh, yeah. I I don't even know. I I finished it, at, but I think I did like I don't know six or seven tries or something before I actually. Uh, completed it so um yeah. yeah and i got the do you have the expansion uh no i i did not i i got seventh continent on that expansion kickstarter but i just bought all the first kickstarter stuff because i wasn't sure if i'd like it so i just bought the basic stuff and and the three little box expansions from the first kickstarter and yes people bug me all the time and say rob you need to go get that box and add it in so i plan to do that later i still just want to play through the other two curses i have and then I can justify going and spending money on another box. And I'm told I have quite a bit of time till the seventh sit will, will actually deliver. So I probably have about a year to complete that box. So I'm, I'm in no rush. <laughs> and, and that's the smart thing to do. Instead of doing like I did, which, which is I have the expansion. Everything is painted. And I, oh, I, wow. I barely touched it. I haven't played it much yet oh. at all. So, And I mean, yeah. we're in the same situation in that way. Like when you create content and you keep... It's always like new games that you want to film or yep, play. Yeah, never thoughts. <laughs> So it's not like you, I mean, once in a while I take like a weekend. I'm like, I'm just going to play this one game this weekend. I just have fun with it, right? So, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but a lot of times it's just this next game all the time. Yeah. 
Yeah, so too Seven Continent. Games, too many good games. Yeah. Seven Continent is obviously the, the best game so far since we both have it on. I don't know. We'll see what mm -hmm. the number ones are. Yep, yep. All right. So my number one is Too Many Bones by Chip Theory Games. Uh, this is from a company that literally has chip in the title. All their games are centered around poker chips. Weighted, beautiful, high-quality poker chips are the main component. And they don't use cardboard in their game for cards or the boards. It is neoprene mats, high-quality neoprene mats for the boards. And the card stock and reference sheets are all PVC plastic. The games are known to be waterproof and windproof, and it's crazy. It's kind of a joke when you see it, and you're like, why did they spend all this money on components? And why is this game so expensive? But they spent just as much time and love making a good quality game. And in Too Many Bones, specifically, it is a game where you start off as a gear lock. You've been scared out of the forest by the humans, or not the humans, sorry, the, um, oh, what are they called? Basically, they're a group of tyrants. They have a name, the Eben, I think. Uh, they scare you out of the forest. You cower back to a human castle and you ask the humans for help they don't want to help you so the gearlock council the little race of their like little tiny hobbit troll kind of mix race they're their own unique thing the art is very interesting in this game but you basically set out on your own a small group of gearlocks you can play it true solo or you can play it two-handed or you can get up to four players around the table and you take these gearlocks they're very asymmetrical they have their own mats their own dice their own boards their own skills and stats that you level up and you go and play through an adventure going through the forest and the river and the mountains and you basically pick a tyrant you want to take down and based on that tyrant you choose that final boss you will have to pick pick certain enemy types to put together in a randomized queue and then you make a specific um, length of encounter deck and every day you're going to go draw a new encounter out of the deck and similar to kind of like Gloomhaven style, you'll get a choice like off the city events and, and the road events in Gloomhaven, you'll get a card that'll read you a little story, give you a choice. And every day, every day you're making a choice whether you want to do a battle or maybe there's a peaceful option or maybe it's like a little dexterity mini game where you're flicking poker chips and dice around the mat and doing silly stuff. Um, but it's very thematic. There's a story to it, an overarching story. Every day feels like, it feels very like kind of Lord of the Rings, like you wake up, and you're in this kind of fantasy world and you can tell there's a lot of pop culture references in it but it is kind of like it's it's a little silly but a very hardcore gameplay to it and uh it's co quite complex but the, it's a rich deep game and i think it it's worth the money but it's it's an expensive game because of the components but the amount of gameplay there and the amount of replayability to it you will every time feel like you're going on an adventure with this little tiny gear lock that could die in the first day or first couple days uh, but once you build yourself up you get your skills going you're rolling handfuls of big colorful beautiful custom dice taking out enemies and eventually fighting a tyrant at the end in a big boss battle and it's a very tactile like moving your chips around the board it's kind of abstract the combat it's on a neoprene mat with spaces you're moving your chips around the enemies are chips and you have health chips underneath uh, that that you remove for health it's a very very addictive system like when you get to remove those chips after you take all the red chips out from under an enemy and, they, and you throw them away because they're dead. It, feel, it feels very good, but it's definitely an adventure game. It's my favorite one. It's the one I've played the most probably on my whole list of adventure games. And that's Too Many Bones, a dice builder RPG uh, by Fantasy Flight Games. Or not Fantasy Flight, sorry, Chip Theory Games. My bad. My bad. Chip Theory Games. I This is a game that I, I don't own. I, don't, I haven't played it, but I've seen your playthroughs. I've seen other playthroughs. <laughs> I've I watched a lot of playthroughs on this. And I think, you know, I, at some point I want to play it as well. But I don't know, is it even out in retail? Like, can you buy it in the store? Yes. Uh, so, well, here's the thing. So they only sell direct. Most people wait until a Kickstarter. They do like two Kickstarters a year, I learned. I only found out about Too Many Bones last year this time. I've only owned it for a year. I had no idea who Chip Theory Games was. But people kept messaging me and saying, Rob, you finished Gloomhaven. You go find another, I kept asking the, the chat and the viewers, I want to find another big game I'm going to spend lots of hours in. And they recommended Too Many Bones, go chase it down. And I went, I've never heard of this. So I went to Gen Con, I went to the booth, they demoed it for us. I fell in love instantly. My wife fell in love with it more than I did actually. Okay. And she was like, we, we need this game. And when she, I saw her eyes light up after we played one scenario uh, on the convention floor, I, I was like, okay, we're getting this. And, and Chip Theory hooked us up with some of it. I bought the rest of it. And we just, we're hooked and our friends all love it, but it is, 
it is, it's hard because it's only direct you can buy from their web store on Chip Theory Games. And there, there is, Europe has a flat rate shipping, US has a flat rate shipping, but these, these boxes, Joseph, they're like 20 pound boxes <laughs> of content. It's all neoprene, PVC plastic. There's like, the only paper in it is the rule book. That's it. Everything else is plastic and neoprene rubber and all this stuff and felt and everything. It's like, yeah, it's a very high quality production, but it's worth like, you will get a ton of gameplay out of it if you like the system. And there is a cheaper version called Too Many Bones Undertow that they made. It's, oh, it's, yeah. okay. it's maybe 20% cheaper, but it was made after the Too Many Bones base set as a cheaper way for people to get in and try it. It only comes with two gear locks instead of four and comes with five tyrants instead of seven. But I don't know if I'd recommend that as a way to start. I still would probably say the base set. There's more newbie friendly gear locks in there to play as. Um, but one of the one of the gear locks in the second set is not too complicated. But uh, yeah, that's a cheaper way to start it. But I would still spend the extra whatever it is forty US dollars I think to get the um, the base set of four gear locks, seven tyrants, more encounters, more loot. Uh, yeah, just more options. It's it's good stuff. But it's it's hard because you can't just go to your friendly local game store and buy it. We have a store in Canada, one retailer that carries it, one retailer. But Chip Theory Games does not sell it in retail at this time. They sell it only direct from the website or in Kickstarters. But there are, I've heard, some retailers that will carry it as like a specialty product. I, I have friends. Uh, I have a friend, at least one, that owns it. So I should I should um, borrow it from him. I think because... try it. Yes, <laughs> try it before you buy it, Joseph. Try it because you might you might not lock, like it, and you then you're in a lot of money even just on the base set. It's because you're paying for you're not just paying for paper and you know, like in a normal game and some, some pop out tokens, this is like, and I should make a, I should make a, a playthrough video of this as well, because this is, again, it's, it's sort of like mage night. People ask me all the time, like, Oh, have yep. you played this? When are you going to, when are you going to film it? Uh, Hardcore so. fan base, man. Yeah. Hardcore fan base. People love that game. And I, I should, see why now Yeah, I see why at least I Very should good. borrow it from my friend and make a playthrough. Uh, that, that's the minimum. So. Yep, try it out. I want to hear your impressions on it. Give Too Many Bones a playthrough. Even if you don't play it on the channel, just when you're yeah. learning it, I want to hear after your first play. I want to hear what you... Even after you open the box the first time, I want to, I want to hear your impressions. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was I'm, going yeah. to... I was going. It's, it's kind of sad because the Cloud Spire game, I was going to uh, meet up with, with Chip Theory Games at Essence Spiel last year. Yeah, yeah. It was on my like schedule to do when I was there, but I had, I don't know, there was so much to do and somehow in all that mix, I never went to their booth, which is a bit oh, sad. No. Yeah, <laughs> I I went to many Joseph. I went to many conventions, and I walked right by their booth, and I never went in. I walked by their booth for for four years in a row at, at Origins and Gen Con, and nothing pulled me into their booth. I, and I walked right by and never knew. And then last year I went there, and I I I blew my mind. I was like, where have they been all my life? Like, yeah, Cloud Spire is great too, but uh, I'm I'm really year. I'm really into this whole. Uh, <laughs> I think I think more people should do this with the uh, neoprene mats instead of cardboard. That is so cool. Uh, yeah, it is very idea. cool. But, and it, but it, a lot of companies are. A lot of companies do make board, uh, neoprene mats now of their boards. Yeah. I have yeah, one exactly. for Game yeah. of Board yeah. Game and, and all these other ones. Yeah. All right. So my number one is not that exciting because it's already been mentioned as well. We already oh. talked a bit about this. But Tainted Grail is my absolute number ah. one when it comes to adventure feeling. I mean, these, like I said, I played through a whole thing with, with two characters. that I think that was like... I don't know, 50 hours or whatever it took me. Yeah. And then I, I played through maybe 10 hours on live stream or something like that in a few episodes. Okay. And I mean, just the, like, even even though I played through the whole thing with two players and I watched uh, Rob and Mel's whole playthrough <laughs> and I played the so and I played a bit in the solo, I still feel like I don't know what's going to happen all the time because ah, yeah, it's, it's so weird. Like, and, and I went in the solo... I went for a totally different, and I, I, I was thinking that, oh, this time I'm going to go for a different option, like at a certain point. I can't say where. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no spoilers. <laughs> but the weird thing was, I didn't even go for that one because when I got to that point, there was a third option there that I never saw in my first playthrough. So I went for the yep. third option instead. But I still have one route that I never took. <laughs> so, and you guys wow. didn't take that one either. So there's one route oh. that I haven't seen at all. So, I'm going to play it, I guess, uh, again after I'm done. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and also the different characters, like the one I'm playing in my solo playthrough. Uh, I think you're supposed to call her Neve or something. It looks like Niam, but yeah, she's oh, like the yeah. promo character. Yep. 
Yeah, the fifth character. Yeah, so every time I enter a settlement, I lose a reputation with her because she's <laughs> yep, famous. Nobody likes her. <laughs> it's like, how am I going to build up reputation with this character? I don't understand how that's going to work, which is in some ways right. is a bit fun as well, because like when you enter, oftentimes when you enter a unfriendly settlement, you have to do a blue encounter, which is meet some, some kind of diplomatic uh, encounter. Yeah. And a lot of times, if you fail one of those, then you will lose reputation. But it yep. doesn't matter for me, because I don't have any reputation anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's yeah, kind of like an advantage, too. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's weird. And it's so cool, like you said, with have the different characters unlocking different story parts. Again, yeah. can't say what, but when I went up yeah. with Neve in a certain spot, all of a sudden there was another option there, right, in, in the app. Like, oh, if you're playing yeah. Neve, do this. You can click this. Yep. And that took me... Not uh, that was like an hour of adventuring that I would never get with the other guys. <laughs> yeah, it it feels very much like a video game, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. <laughs> it's branching paths and and it's got the butterfly effect where you like you do one thing and it will yeah. change things all the way many many chapters in advance. You'll yeah. you'll have things that were changed a long time ago that will affect choices that you can and cannot make. It's very well done. And I I well. like this whole. I must say I like this whole like choose your own adventure style, but and I think I need to get into some of those books because like when I as a kid I read those books and I had such a good time, yeah, yeah. but I haven't done that in, you know as an adult. But I know that there's like board gamey sort of style. I think there's a, even a game called Choose Your Own Adventure, right? Uh, like mystery. Uh, the series. I actually was in a bookstore last night with my daughter, and we bought one of these Choose Your Own Adventure okay. books, yeah. like just the books themselves. They are called Choose Your Own Adventure. There's a series of them. They've been out for many, many decades. There's a ton, like you said, you played them as a kid. But there are two, I think, that they've actually made into board game products where they actually added components and a board and all that. Uh, but it is still a choose your own adventure book is the main core thing. And I don't own any of them yet, but uh, some are on the way uh, for my daughter, actually. Uh, so, okay. Uh, yeah, she's okay. really into that stuff right now. And, and I want to do that so we can get her into games like Tainted Grail and Seventh Continent and uh, that kind of stuff, too. How old, so, old is she? She's 10. Okay, yeah. So then yeah. you can you know, really get her into the board gaming. Uh... Yep, that's my job as a father <laughs> is get my daughter right from like a very young age. I had her playing board games and now she's like an opponent in games like Keyforge. She oh, gives yeah. me a run for my yeah. money and we play Root together and stuff like that. Yeah, so. Ah, that's yeah. cool. Very fun. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was interesting. So we had what, uh, Tainted Grail and Seven Continent is the two I think that we and shared. I I I thought you would have had Tainted Grail as soon as you mentioned Seventh Continent was number two and so high <laughs> for you. I thought Tainted Grail. I watched I think the very first bit of your first video of that yeah. just to see your setup and how you were liking it. And you yeah, I could tell you really liked that the was game. So and, excited. And I thought Seventh Con <laughs> Seventh Continent. I feel is like uh, just a bit under Tainted Grail, and it was on my list too. I feel yeah. like they're very similar. If you like yeah. one, you'll probably really like the other. So yeah, and if you go yeah. by my. Like I am starting now to do like every year I do my top hundred list in in Octo yeah. starting in October, so I started yeah. working on that and I I mean spoiler alert but I, Tainted Grail is not in my top ten in that list, but Seven oh, Continent wow. is in my top five. So I, I Seven Continent game game mechanically I think Seven Continent is way beyond Tainted Grail, with how everything works because Tainted Grail has one thing that I have I have a very hard time handling in in board games and that is, one die that you roll and the outcome can affect a lot of things oh yeah yeah i know you mean, if yeah. you give me 10 dice and i can manipulate them like in Star Wars imperial assault yep. uh, i'm okay with yep. dice i don't hate dice but this whole and the same same goes actually for a game that you mentioned earlier which is is a game i really like this war of mine um yep. yeah that was I was thinking about that is that an adventure that's so depressing so i can put it on this list as an adventure that's that just... <laughs> We had yeah, I rated, I rated that very low on my list because it is an adventure game, technically, but because you are going on those nighttime hunts yeah. to locations. But I rated it low for the adventure feel. Like I would rate that as a very amazing game. Yeah, yeah exactly. But the adventure yeah. aspect is not not there. And yes, it's all too much randomness. And, and yeah, I, I would, and I wouldn't call it like a, an adve adventure. In my mind, is something positive that you go out on, like Frodo and the guys, <laughs> and they they're trying to accomplish something. I mean, being in a civil war, that's not an adventure <laughs> in that sense. So, but anyway, yeah. what I was going to say is that we have the same thing there in this war of mine, where it's it's a smaller part there, but again, you have this like, I I, I don't see like why do you have to have that die roll in there? Can't you just do something with cards? <laughs> Let me draw a card instead. 
Like make a yeah. deck with instead of having like one to six on a die, I rather have a deck with one to six and I just draw a card. It's exactly the same thing, but it feels better for me to draw a card and let the card like shuffle the cards, draw one to six. Oh, I got a one. Okay, I lost. Uh, for some weird I reason. I don't know if I've... I, I, but I think you'd have to take it one step further for me is I would like the card system because it's more easy to change a card yeah, yeah, in and out yeah. of that deck to yeah. modify it. Like Gloomhaven's deck modifiers, yeah. for example. Like you're still just rolling dice technically, but you can yeah. manipulate the yeah. sides on that dice. And that's what you need is, is some dice mitigation. And then I'm sold. Like because, anything because, where I can flip a dice or yeah. change dice or. Yeah, because I, I think that. it's in Tainted Grail, like most of Tainted Grail uh, is up to your decisions and so on. But yeah. there are there are a few times when it's when it's like oh I rolled bad oh that's too that's too bad now I lost my food or whatever it was and I have to spend like thirty minutes or whatever to go and hunt again and like that's so <laughs> annoying I I'm like I don't want to yeah. so so that's why yeah. Seven Continents is so much better for me because I never get that feeling in Seven Continent that it's it's luck dependent in that way. Um, which it, it is, is of only course, with the card flips, right? It's only with, but you have full control on how many cards you want to put in Seventh Continent to a test. Yeah. So it's like it's up to you how random you want it to be or not, right? And I, I like that very much. It's very unique, and, and yeah. I love that about Seventh Continent. And it is also random with the whole, like if you know the exploration. I, I know I played with a friend when I got Seventh Continent, and like very early in the game, one of these exploration cards that we got was I don't know was like spikes we had to get over or climb over or whatever and yeah, that yeah. totally messed up the whole our whole playthrough because you know, we, we started out so bad and we everything yeah. went downhill from that basically <laughs> so there's some randomness yeah. in there but I, I, I never feel that same the same way if it's cards as for some reason i don't know it, it comes from uh, i don't know it's it's my love for card games i think that that makes it okay understood understood <laughs> all right so i think that that was the list but I, I mean i had a really good time i think this was a really fun setup and and it, i really i mean i like doing these like I, I did a few times with friends i did like top list together with, with other people and i mean doing it like this is so cool because we're sitting on, on opposite sides of the world basically and we can still yeah. uh, talk to you know do this together as a, a top five list so so I hope you had a good time as well, and and I hope we can do yeah, this at some point again in the future, or play some game together Absolutely. online. And I mean, that's, that's yeah. some, there are some some games that would work, I think, to play like having you know, if we both own the copy of the game, then you could we could basically play it, maybe not stream or anything, but just for fun. I mean, I think it would be possible. Playing games for fun, Joseph? I no, I can't do that. That's that's not what I'm in this hobby for. Of course, I can play games for fun. The the way I would do it though is probably digital games. There's like some digital games online. That I think I think that's the best way to play, in my opinion. Like playing like uh, yeah. Like I saw you streamed Root, for example. Oh, yeah. Like you and I can oh, play yeah. some Root in that app, right? And it would just take care. Oh, of yeah, that we, that we could do. You would probably uh, beat me badly though. But that game is so cool. I I never played Root before, so that was my oh. first time playing Root. Just doing the tutorial last night. Uh, from oh, okay. from where we're recording, and wow, what a game! I mean, it is I, a great game. Yeah, I've seen people play this on at game nights and, su and such. And those, the thing is, like those guys that played it, they are really into like war games and such. So yeah, I, yeah, so I got the in, in, you know impression that okay, this is a war game with a cute theme on it, which it might be in some ways, but the whole asymmetry is. is so cool. Uh, yeah, I, that is amazing. I, 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 I it must be like the most asymmetric game ever, right? Uh that I've played probably yes, yes. It's because yeah, it's just weird how they all balanced all those crazy factions, and they're so different. Yeah, they all yeah. work differently, but it's still balanced. Like I, I don't know how they did that, but it's 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 kind of mind blowing. And it was pretty funny because like as soon as I ended my stream last night. Uh, and I went to YouTube. The first thing I saw was, oh, you're doing a stream of Root, the actual board game, <laughs> in like yeah, 30 yeah. minutes. And I was so tired, so I had to go to bed. But I'm going to watch that later on. Uh, so. Yeah, it's coincidence, too. We scheduled that like a week in advance. And it's the same day that Root came out digital, yeah. released on the same day we were streaming. That was not planned. I would have streamed Digital Root if if I knew. I would have just scheduled my stream on a different day. But uh, yeah, Did you so get a lot of uh, people coming into the stream and, and you know uh, because of that? No, not a single person mentioned the digital oh, version at all. Okay. I was surprised. I thought somebody would bring it up, but they didn't. But I'll I'll definitely be streaming that on the channel most likely next week. So yeah. I played I played it this morning actually. Very good, very good game. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for okay. watching, and thanks again to Rob. And you know, go check out Rob's gaming table. Obviously, by now you will have seen a bunch of because I will have done some cut-ins, so you will see a bunch of his videos clips already <laughs> here, and and there will be descriptions and links and everything in the description down there as well. And you know, tell us in the comment section what your favorite adventure games are and what is an adventure game. We can have a debate. That's <laughs> always <So> fun. <laughs> I think that I think. I think both you and I, Rob, are we are. I think we're pretty mainstream, right? I don't think we had any weird games on here. I th I think Hexplore it would be kind oh, yeah. of not yeah. mainstream. It's not that popular, but it's it's had some decent Kickstarter success. But yeah, it's not very heard of, and I only found out about it this year from fans telling me uh, in the chat to check it out. Um, but yeah, go check out Hexplore if you're in yeah. adventure games. Give it a shot. It's it's not a very popular game, not very highly rated yet on Board Game Geek, but it's. It has a very, very passionate fans, and everyone I talk to loves it. So, yeah, when I saw your stream was up, I, I, I didn't recognize the game at all. So, yeah. it must have, you know, got, maybe it's sort of in the category where I'm not really looking. I don't know. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> not, your, not your style of game, right? Yeah. Like, it's not what you're trying to fill your collection with, I guess. But, I'm, I'm, but I I'm, do want to, yeah, leave the comments below if you're watching this video, like Joseph said. And if you have any games that you rate very highly that are not in either of our lists, like I want to know too. Leave them below because I'm always looking for cool adventure games to to jump in, and I'm not afraid going back and trying one that's years old. It doesn't have to be brand yeah. new or the next hotness on Kickstarter. I'm looking at I want to play great games no matter when they came out. Kind of idea. So I'm more cult of the I'm more cult of the new, but. <laughs> 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 all right well thank you so much for watching and as always i hope you have a great evening or morning or whenever you're watching take care bye 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 bye